Hey everybody, welcome back around to the blog and grill. I am your host Doug here with your video blog for March 7th, 2015. Wrapping up another week of college basketball. And we're also going to talk NFL free agency and we'll head down to Yankee Spring Training. Syracuse yesterday was hit by the NCAA. Jim Beheim has been suspended nine games. They've had 12 scholarships taken over the next four years and 108 wins of his total have been vacated. These wins are wins that date back from the 2004 to 2006 run, as well as the 2010 to 2012 run as well. Basically, what saved them was the self-imposed ban. With that self-imposed ban, they will not face any further postseason ban. Um, so that's big for them. And basically what it came down to was a list of many things that were not good in this program. Academic misconduct, which we'll get to in a minute. Extra benefits, failed drug testing on the policy that they implemented themselves, and impermissible booster activity, which we'll also talk about here in a minute as well. Basically, what it came down to was Jim Beheim did not monitor his students and what they were doing outside of the ball, um, outside of the ball games. And basically, what we see is we've seen instances now of a secretary that wrote papers for both Fab Mello and James Sutherland. And the biggest thing I saw was the connections with the Oneida YMCA and a booster, Jeff Cornish, who gave players up to $8,000 at a time for some community service and some internships, which have now been deemed inadequate um, with this YMCA. So I think what it means for the program overall is I think you'll see Syracuse kind of take a step back with some of their talent. Um, they're going to be dropped three scholarships each year for the next four years. This year's class, which is a top 10 class, is locked in, so it's not going to affect that class at all. He will miss the first nine conference games of the ACC schedule, so we'll see Mike Hopkins coach that, coach those games. And really the biggest impact, I think, is going to be on the scholarships of it all. I think Jim is going to fight through this. Um, there have been appeals filed, which I don't think anything's going to happen with these appeals. He might get some of his wins back, but I think the scholarship ban will stay. So it's really over the next five years. Um, so they'll be down from 13 to 10 scholarship players, which is kind of a big deal. But Jim plays with a short bench anyways, so I'm not too worried about that. I think people just cannot overreact to this. Just pump the brakes a little, and everything is going to be okay. We'll have more on this as developments come in. That's all we have right now. And... Now let's move on to some quick NFL free agency moves. The Cowboys and their great offensive line, they've re-signed offensive tackle Doug Free to a three-year, $15 million deal with $6 million of that being guaranteed. Easily the best offensive line last year in football. Protected Romo, gave him time to throw, and really opened up big holes for DeMarco Murray. And the other big signing yesterday was Marshawn Lynch agrees to a two-year $12 million deal, which will probably be his last contract in the National Football League with the Seattle Seahawks. He will likely retire after this. So people ask me what is going to be the next move, who is the next domino to fall in um, the NBA, or in the NFL, sorry. And I think what it's going to come down to is we're going to have to see um, – who gives who what? Actually, we do have this just in. The San Diego Chargers have announced that they've agreed to a two-year deal with wide receiver Jacoby Jones. Okay, so that's something to look at as well. And really, the next move that I could see happening is possibly a Reggie Wayne deal. Reggie Wayne's on his way out in... Um, he is on his way out in in Indianapolis, but we'll see what happens next with him. And also, I think we could see Randall Cobb get signed by somebody, and now I think the Chicago Bears are a good fit for him once they got rid of Brandon Marshall. We'll keep you updated on NFL free agency as well. Let's have your New York sports update. Yankee camp today. Masahiro Tanaka throws his first simulated game. Through 29 pitches over two innings, 23 of them were for strikes, and after after his session, he was quoted saying, overall, I thought it was really good. Of course, he's coming off that small tear in his elbow right now. And in Yankee action yesterday, they split two games. They played the Phillies. They split with the, they beat them 4-1, to one, then lost to the Pirates 3-1. to one. And um, let's see here. Lost to the Pirates 4-1. to one. 3 to 1 Beltron and Arod combined yesterday 0 for 4 with 3 strikeouts. 
But the bright spot of the day yesterday had to be pitcher Brian Mitchell, who will likely make the trip north with the team. Two innings, one hit, and two strikeouts. Your New York schedule tonight, Knicks are at home against the Pacers at 7.30. St. John's took on Villanova today. Um, and that game currently with St. John's and Villanova had Villanova winning in, in daunting fashion, 105. 105 to 68. They shot <clears throat> hit 11 three pointers and shot 57% from the field. And Syracuse fall to NC State today to wrap up their season. And in hockey, I don't do it very often, but we're getting down towards the playoffs. The Islanders will be taking on the Panthers tonight. Puck for Puck will drop for that game right around 7 o'clock. I will be back on Monday with another blog for you as we'll start to talk conference title week in college basketball. We'll also do some more NFL free agency. We'll wrap up NASCAR at Las Vegas as that is tomorrow as well. Thanks for tuning in to the blog, Andrew. I'll be back on Monday. Have a great rest of your weekend. You can check me out on sportsmindingnews.com. Follow me on Twitter, YankeeBaller415. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you Monday.